Hello, I'm Dr. Christopher Rapuano, and I'm here with my associate, Dr. Biren Megpara. We're from the cornea service at Will's Eye Hospital. We're coming to you from the Will's Eye Alumni Society newsroom at Will's Eye in Philadelphia. So we're here to talk about kind of dry eye and a new study that came out on dry eye. At Biren, do you see a lot of dry eye patients? Definitely, Chris. I, I would say it's probably the most common complaint people come in when they come in to see us. Now, we are cornea specialists, so it is a little self-selective, but yeah, you know, 50 to 75 percent of patients that come through the door have some sort of dry eye symptom. I agree, and even if they have other problems, they often have some dry eye symptoms. Just briefly, what's your kind of stepwise approach to the treatment of dry eye? I know it depends on mild dry eye and severe dry eye, but just kind of sure, in summary. Sure. Yeah, like you said, I, I do tend to have a stepwise approach. So the first thing I'll start with is artificial tears, maybe preserved tears first, if, if patients have to use it more frequently than preservative-free tears. Um, Next would be something prescription like lefitograst or, or cyclosporin. Um, sometimes we use low-dose steroids in, in a limited capacity. Um, definitely want to treat the eyelids, um, treat blepharitis with warm compresses, sometimes ointments at night. Um, punctal plugs are, are little, uh, little stoppers that you put in the eyelids to, to help retain tears that you have. And then there are more um, advanced options or, or you know, patients with very severe dry eye. There are other things that we do. Now, omega-3s are kind of been part of the treatment of dry eye, and a recent study came out looking at omega-3s for dry eye called the DREAM study. It was published in the New England Journal of Medicine, and we I always joke with the residents and the fellows, when an ophthalmology study is published in the New England Journal of Medicine, we should pretty much know about it. So tell us a little bit about that study and what was good and bad and what the findings were. Sure. Um, one of the greatest things about this study is that it was so big. Um, it was a large, randomized um, double-blinded study where they compared the use of omega-3 supplementation with the placebo, the placebo. And the placebo that was used here is another type of oil. It was basically olive oil. Um, and what these researchers did is they compared the two groups as far as were there differences in the symptoms of dry eye and the, the signs of dry eye. And, and by signs, we mean staining of the cornea, uh, something called a Schirmer's test, um, and, and how the tears break up. Um, and the interesting thing in this study is when you look at the two groups, um, both groups actually had an improvement in symptoms, a pretty significant improvement in symptoms, as well as improvement in the signs of their dry eye. Mm -hmm. And w were these patients kind of super selected or were they kind of relatively real life patients? They were real life patients. Um, they were screened and they were found to have moderate to severe dry eye. Um, but the neat thing about this study, um, and, and some may consider this a positive or some may consider it a negative, is all patients were allowed to continue any pre-existing dry eye treatments they were doing. So if they were on artificial tears or restasis, they were allowed to continue that um, to simulate more of a, a real life situation. Right, because a lot of studies when they're done, you have to stop all medications, can't do anything else, and just use you know, the, the study medication. So I do think that was a, you know, a really great aspect of this study, plus the size of it. And I think it was a one year trial, if I remember um, yeah. that. So it was a long term trial. So, you know, if this study didn't show omega-3s being helpful, why is that? And are omega-3s helpful or not? Um, that is a good question, and I don't think we know exactly. Um, omega-3s are helpful in that they lower inflammation, but we're not really sure exactly what in these oils is, is actually the active component or what is actually lowering inflammation. Is it the omega-3? Is it something that's found in fish oil? Um, is it something that's found in other oils? For example, olive oil has omega-9, so is, is that component involved? Um, both of these groups also had vitamin E, um, and, and that has shown to have anti-inflammatory effects. So the key here, I think, is just treating the inflammation. Okay, now whether it's omega-3 or some other oil, we don't really know. Um, but I, in my practice, I, I would still recommend omega-3 supplementation to patients. It's something that's easy to do. It's easily accessible. You can go to the drugstore and get it. Um, relatively inexpensive um, and, and relatively minor side effects. Right, and it comes in both uh, naturally, as in you know, fish, especially uh, you know, fish diet. It comes in you know, certain as uh, seeds and nuts. Um, I think salmon has you know, high, yeah. high uh, omega-3 and, and fish oil content. Get it in lots of different pills, and it other has has other benefits too, other health benefits. Yeah, exactly. There's cardiovascular benefits. Um, some say it decreases symptoms from arthritis, joint pains, aches, 
Right, may help with memory loss, who knows. So exactly. there, there are other benefits to it. So I, I agree. I prescribe, you know, whether it's, a, whether it's a Mediterranean diet type of, you know, high in omega-3 and fish oils and things like that, I think it's helpful not only probably for dry eye and maybe even some blepharitis, eyelid inflammation symptoms, um, but also maybe other health uh, aspects in the body. Now, are there people who, who, who shouldn't get kind of high doses of these medications? Yeah, you know, you know it, like I said, it is a very safe medication. There's maybe one group that this should be avoided in, and those are patients that are on um, blood thinners. Um, a high dose of, of omega-3 um, has been shown to increase bleeding, so I would avoid it in, in those sorts of patients. Yeah, so but otherwise... Patients like on Coumadin or high-dose aspirin or things like that. So, exactly. Yeah, so great. Well, thank you very much. So I'm Chris Rapuano. I'm here with Bearden McPara from the cornea service at Will's Eye Hospital. Thank you very much. Thanks.